Jake Thomas here with Pride Marine Group. We're down at the Toronto International Boat Show and I'm going to take you through some of the new 2012 Nautique product. Right beside me here we have the brand new 200V and what this boat does, it's the all-encompassing, we call it the Cottage Edition boat. Uh, effectively most ski boats have the engine in the middle. With the engine in the middle, it's awesome for slalom skiing because the weight's farther forward, but for wakeboarding, not so much because wakeboarders want to have the weight at the back, they want the big wake. So, enter the 200V. This is effectively our 200 mid-engine hull from the rub rail down, from the rub rail up, with the motor in the back. This is our V-drive, so now this boat will do everything. This is what's classified as a crossover boat. So this allows you to move the hydrogate from the ski position to the wakeboard position, change the parameters of the wake so it just pancakes and becomes a slalom wake. Little kids or the big adults like me, they want to go surfing a little bit later, move it back into wakeboard mode, fill the ballast tanks, changes the wake shape and the size of the wake, and you have the quintessential cottage boat that does it all. With the tower, spinning board racks for cottages that have a boathouse, the tower flips down with two easy lever flips, the whole thing collapses, so real convenient for anybody that puts their boat on a lift inside a boathouse or if you use a garage in the off season you're not having to undo a whole bunch of screws and stuff to fold that tower down. Next boat in the lineup we have the 210 and the 210 is again a V-drive the same as the 200V the big difference is the 210 was effectively designed for wakeboarding and wakeboarding only. You can still do everything with the boat tubing and all sorts of other fun stuff the 200V does however deliver a better slalom wake if that is what you're trying to do. In the case of the 210, you have three tanks, one center mounted tank, two rear tanks, and that allows you to weight the boat down, thus increasing the size of the wake and giving the guys tons of pop. I can put the mic down for a second and show you how cool the seating is. It's really modular. Let's face it, when you're skiing, all the action's back there, so you want your audience to go back there. So in the case of the 210, there is a bench midship which allows you to position your spectators or your boat riders in the same direction as the talent that's happening on the water. But at the end of the night, you want to go for a little dinner cruise. Fold down that bench, you get your bench back. And then I got to put the mic down for a sec, but this bench moves, which is really, really cool. So hang on a sec. and now you have your boat back. So the modular seating really does give you the versatility to have a whole bunch of people facing forward, a whole bunch of people facing backwards, make everybody comfortable. And for wakeboarding and for surfing, you want all your bodies midship back anyway. So for this, it's ideal. Some other cool little features on the stern of the boat. Nautiques are built so tough that you can actually pick the boat up with that cleat. If you have a boathouse that's got some sort of lifting mechanism, you can just go click, click, front and back, pick the boat up, it's out of the water. If you want to tow tubes from back here, that is also a tow pylon. Clicks back into place, out of sight, out of mind. Tons of storage in the 210. It really was designed by the riders, for the riders. With easy access right through to the midship of the boat. So if you want to get large awkward objects out of the boat, that is not a problem. As well as when you've got people sitting on the back, you don't have to move them in order to get your stuff out of the trunks. I'll show you the tower on the 210. The tower, again, tons of bells and whistles you can put on this. You can add a bimini top, several different types of speakers, spinning board racks. So the nice thing about the board racks you load them from inside the boat, you don't have to break a neck loading them in from outside the boat, but once they're in, ready to rock, send them back out and uh, store it away. It's not that easy doing this with a microphone in your hand, but I'm doing all right. So, uh, tower. Unflip these two little levers. This much I can do with one hand because the correct craft tower is meant to be operated with one hand. So it's super easy even if dad's down the city and mom's up by the cottage, uh, at the cottage with the kids for the summer, it's something that she can do without any worry at all. So it really was well engineered by the guys at Craft. 
They make all their parts in-house, so QA and Q quality control is of the utmost importance at CorrectCraft. They offer the best warranties in the business because they're building the best boats in the business. So if you haven't driven a Nautique, you don't know what you're missing. They really are awesome. Moving on to the 230. This is the big, bad, the biggest, baddest wakeboard boat in the business. 23 feet, throws a monster wake, amazing for surfing, amazing for wakeboarding, but again, creature comforts, they designed the boat for riders to be played with by the riders. Much like the 210, we have some modular seating. This middle bench, a little difficult to do with a microphone in your hand, but take my word for it. You can get rid of the backrest, you can flip it under and just make it a seat, or you can reposition it so it's facing towards the stern or facing towards the bow of the boat. If you're cruising down the lake just looking to go somewhere and have a good place to hang out have lunch, also gives you a great spot to hang out. Walk through transom allows you to stop beating on the seats as you're getting in and out of the boat, but when you stop for lunch, you can easily fill in the spot at the back here with this cushion and you get your sun pad back, fill in the spot that I'm standing on here with the cushion, and you get your full bench back. Some of the other new toys for 2012, there's a completely redesigned link system, which I can show you on the 210, it's probably a little easier. And what that is, is it's a touchscreen system that integrates all the electronics at the dash into one convenient location, so it's super easy to turn on all your features, GPS, cruise control, your stereo control, and all your bells and whistles and your features. The boating sitting in here, this is called the Byerly Edition. This is Scott Byerly. He's an icon in the wakeboarding business. He's pioneered the twin tip wakeboard back in the early 90s. He really is an icon in the sport. So Correct Craft has built a boat with Scott and this is it, the Byerly Edition. So lots of cool features specific to the Byerly Edition. In addition to the graphics that are uh, just amazing on the outside, get a load of the graphics. Metal flake paint, we have a custom etched teak swim platform. Yeah, the teak platform is covered because it's, uh, it's brand new and it's been etched and um, molded into Scott's yeah, signature. But with the swimming, or the swiveling tower speakers rather, uh, if you're inside the boat, what's nice is you can point them down so you don't have to blast it around the lake. If you're sitting on the dock, you can blast them forward so you can blast it towards the dock. And subsequently when you're riding, you can blast them off towards the back of the wake. The horn speakers, although they're kind of blocked by the bimini top, they have some cool features. You can add overhead lights, so now we've got some LED light action happening there and you can eliminate the inside of the boat. In the case of the Byerly Edition, and only in the Byerly Edition, notice the cup holders. They're all backlit cup holders, so just a little bit of bling bling there. Up in the bow, the bow rail is laser etched in Byerly's name and then backlit in red, so it just looks awesome. These are specifics to the Byerly Edition. And then the link system here at the dash, this is just amazing. Your main page has the standard heads up display, your speed, your fuel, your temperature and all that good stuff. There's a video screen if you want to add in a video input from a video iPod player or an iPhone. It has an integrated GPS system. This one doesn't have the map card in it, but what this allows you to do is to load a map card if you're not familiar with your waterway and you can uh, get yourself back home in a fog storm if you need to. Moving down the cursor, you've got a full-blown system for your sound system. Integrates with iPod, you have auxiliary USB input next to the steering wheel. You have the head unit tucked away in the glove box. Also to just dock your iPod, close it up and you can drive everything from over there. You have custom user preferences in this system now, which is amazing. What you can do if dad likes to surf at nine miles an hour with the tanks loaded on the port side, program in the settings, program in the GPS cruise control, then little Johnny, he wants to go wakeboarding at 22 miles an hour with both tanks full in the back, both tanks full in the front. Go to his setting and it actually will do all the change for you as soon as you choose which rider you're on. When you're done, there's a wicked back to dock feature. Press the back to dock button, starts dumping all the ballast, turns the GPS cruise control off. So what that does is it allows you to not have to carry the weight of the boat with you, the ballast system, when you're heading back to the dock. It's dumping that water, not sucking back all the fuel. Uh, moving down the line again, you have more control over your inside stuff. Docking lights for nighttime navigation. Under the swim platform, we have these wicked underwater lights, which are just sweet at night. If you do any chilling at night around the dock, it really does look amazing. Three-speed heater, great for, uh, let's face it, our northern climate up here. The first guy to 
ride is the last guy to drive and he's usually the guy that's sitting there soaking wet so it's really nice to have heat in that regard. Aside from that, the same correct craft quality goes into all of our boats but there's a few more finishing touches in the Byerly. Some of the coloring and the patterns that they've got on the vinyl is only available in the Byerly edition. As you can see there's some etching on the driver's seat, a whole bunch of um, embroidery that takes place across the back pad. It really does look amazing and here at the show is doing it no justice. When you see it on the water it just looks amazing. For power, PCM now offers several different motors. This is our Z409. It is PCM power, which is second to none. PCM makes their own transmission, so that coupled to their power plant puts out the most torque in the industry. There are tons of changes coming down the way in regards to catalytic converters. This one is not equipped with it, but PCM makes um, a very elite catalytic converter system that is modular. So over time, the baffles inside will break down in everybody else's boats because they're made with a ceramic. Uh, engine noise, engine harmonics cause that to break down. When it breaks down, you got to take your headers off and you got to throw them in the garbage. PCM, they use a stainless steel baffle system. So if and when there is any deterioration to the catalytic converter, you can simply remove that component and replace just the core. So moving forward five, ten years down the road, that's going to mean a lot. Right now it's so new, nobody really knows, but as of 2012, January 1st, everybody, every motor that's manufactured in uh, or delivered, manufactured to be delivered in Canada has got to follow the EPA requirements for catalytic converters. Three different power plants this year. There is a 343 horsepower engine, there is a 409, and now there is a 450 horsepower engine, and the PCM power is second to none. You got to hear this to believe it.